So uh, welcome everybody. It's the first budget meeting of the ADCOM for this cycle. Just a few things before we let Chris start rolling through the numbers for uh, DPW water sewer. Um, two things. One, Chris, we have a fairly large number of new members. We have three here live, and then we'll have two more who just joined and aren't able to make this, but they'll likely look at the tape. So as you're going through, if you could explain things that you might be used to putting an acronym on or, or, or going past because the rest of us are familiar with it, I'd appreciate that. And then for the members of the committee, the new members, so this is not, we won't be voting tonight or debating tonight. This is really um, exploratory. So the idea is Chris will um, come in, Dan has spent some time with them and may have some more detailed questions as well as Raffaella. So get your questions in. If you don't get them in and something occurs to you, we still have some time because the voting will occur at the end of all these sessions. At the very end, we'll have one or two meetings depending on how many Warren articles there are and we'll do the debate, the discussion and the voting then. But in the meantime, if you've got a question, please ask it. So anything Dan you would do to kick off this part? No, I don't think so. Uh, me and Raphael had a great uh, hour and a half long meeting with Chris this week or last week kind of, but well, last seven days. <clears throat> so anyway, we had a, a fair, fair amount of questions. We talked to Chris, uh, Raphael, you know, she followed up with a few questions. Um, I think we have everything answered. Um, I would imagine that a fair amount of the questions that you guys are going to ask are the same ones we have already asked. So I think Chris should be prepared to answer just about anything at this point. So I think we're good to go. Okay. You going to share your screen, Chris? I can do that. Certainly. Yeah. <clears throat> just make this. All right. Um, so, also joining me tonight, um, Bob Weirly, who's the water superintendent, and Lance Del Piori, who's the town engineer. So they're on as well. Um, they were on the call with Dan and Raffaella um, last week as well. Um, Bob, Bob's been in town now eight years, going on nine. Uh, Lance is getting ready to close out his, his second year here. So um, Hopefully we can go through this. We'll give you some details as we go. If you have a line item, if you have a question, you know, ask as we go and, and we'll take a pause and, and go through it. Um, I'll try to go through in, in some detail just for any of the new members, anybody watching at home, uh, whether they're residents or, or other ADCON members that haven't seen this before. So um, right. with that, uh, if you're good, I'll, I'll go ahead and we'll start with water yep. and sewer. Let's go. All right. Um, so <clears throat> water and sewer, um, for anybody that doesn't know, is, is an enterprise fund. Both of those are separate funds. Um, the <clears throat> revenue collected is not tax-based, it's, it's usage-based. So every time you turn your faucet on, uh, take a shower, run your dishwasher, laundry, you know that, that's income for the water department. Um, anything that goes down, down the drain into the sewer system um, is revenue for the sewer department. So. Um, that's where our funding comes from. We do have an elected board that we report to. They have um, they have say over um, you know day to day operation policy, um, budgeting, rate. They set the rates. Um, so once the budget is approved in May at town meeting, <clears throat> then the rate for the next fiscal year is adjusted um, to meet that budget that has been set. So um, they're they're involved in this to that extent. Um, so this, uh, we'll start with the water enterprise fund. Um, you know, overall, we actually have a budget decrease. Um, as we go through, you'll see that the um, salaries and expenses um, have gone up, um, both less than two and a half percent. And then we had some debt service come off, um, which actually gives us a deficit or a decrease in the, in the budget from last fiscal year, this next fiscal year. Um, <clears throat> However, doesn't necessarily reflect that the rate that gets voted um, later in the spring will, will go down because um, there are some capital items um, that'll get added back into that rate study that need to be that rate adjustment that need to be covered by the by that. So, and just um, for folks' information, Chris, we use an external vendor annually to do a rate study. Um, yeah, so we we go in depth um, probably every three years, um, okay. and then every year. Um, 
we run, you know, run the budget by him, by that vendor to make sure that that rate adjustment is going to, going to meet the, um, the budget. So okay. we have, have a three-year plan. We have, you know, we have a much longer rate study, um, but really every three years, it needs to be looked at in depth just to make sure we're staying on track. Okay. Thanks. Um, so some of the things, um, <clears throat> you know, that get built into that rate, we're working on a, a million dollar capital funding into the rate structure. That'll be for pipe replacement. Um, the water system is 120 plus miles of, of pipe in the ground. We have three water tanks um, in the system. We have a reuse tank. Um, all of those are now under asset management, 15 years. Um, you know, so we've done, we have three treatment plants. Um, all of those things go into, into that rate and that operating cost that we have. And um, what we're working on is, is now the pipe in the ground, the stuff that you, nobody, nobody can see. Um, so we're working on that. So like I said, the overall budget um, is actually down half a percent. Um, this past year, we constructed a new million gallon tank on Hill Street, um, completed reconstruction of wells seven, nine, and 10, which are down on Oak Street, Lampson Road. We did a full renovation of the Route 1 water tank. Um, and we are actually out to bid or will be shortly for West Street, which will be a dam reconstruction and a um, water main replacement. So that'll be coming up this next construction season. Um, in the water department, water and sewer department, uh, the, we have myself, the DPW director, Bob Worley, the water and sewer superintendent. Um, we have an entire department administrator and then two admin um, underneath her. We have two assistant superintendents, one for treatment, one for distribution. We have a supervisor and 10 technicians. Um, so <clears throat> what you'll notice going through here, um, all of the salaries for water and sewer um, are split. 90% of the salaries get paid out of water. 10% of the salaries get paid out of sewer, with the exception of myself, the town engineer, and the GIS technician. Those are split. Also split with the highway um, highway budget as well. So um, you'll see the salary adjustments were up 1.63%, expenses 2.17, and then we're down in our debt services almost 4%. And I can't remember, do you have union contracts out? Yes. So uh, both the AFSCME union, which has all the technicians in it, and the steelworkers union, which has the supervisors, assistant superintendent, superintendent, um, are all out um, in negotiations right now. So yep. Okay. Um, that adjustment will come, and I know uh, George and Marie are carrying that number separately. Separately, yep. Yep. Okay. But it, it, it will, you know, ultimately get funded out of the enterprise fund. So, um, so going through salaries, um, something that we did this year, um, the water superintendent line item has, has in the past included both the water superintendent, the DPW director, and the town engineer. So we actually split that out into three separate line items just for transparency. It makes it clearer to see um, which, which position is getting what dollar amount. Um, so those are split out. <clears throat> um, the assistant superintendent position, we have uh, two um, bodies, um, two staff members in, in those positions. Um, <clears throat> and then you know we have lumped together all of our water technicians. So all of the water te technicians are now in one line item. <clears throat> um, previously, they had actually been broken out based on the level um, of technician that they, they were at. Um, we have some seasonal salaries. If we are able to get um, any college kids to come back, um, we've actually, we have a, a retired employee that's come back a couple of years um, to help out. Um, and they, that comes out of the seasonal salaries. Um, we have a, a few different types of overtime in here. Um, again, we've tried to consolidate um, just for for ease of use in the budget and the line items. Um, we have weekend duty. The, the facilities are staffed 365 days a year. Um, so we have weekend duty where we have those staff members come in. They have to come in and run their tests, um, check chemical levels, make sure everything's running properly in those treatment plants and well sites. Um, Here's where you'll see the holiday overtime, trench patching, leak detection, meter changing has all been consolidated um, into um, you know one 
overtime item. That's that emergency overtime row or? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's why you see a big jump up. Jump in. You know, okay. Just confirming. Yep. 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 <clears throat> um, sick leave incentive and stipends, those are both contract based, um, union contract based. So those have gone up um, minimal amounts. Um, and then the last two line items are a longevity and a sick leave um, the vacation buyback. So the longevity um, employees that have been here more than five years, um, you know, get a, a certain amount that increases um, to a max. I think it's twelve hundred and fifty dollars is the max. Um, and then the sick leave buyback for that's for anybody that's retiring. <coughs> um, any vacation time they have accrued on the books. Um, any sick leave they have accrued on the books, you know, per their union contracts, they get paid out a, a certain percentage of that time um, if they were to retire. Chris, uh, I've got a question. So I noticed there's two columns for 2023, the 2023 request and then the 2023 town manager. And, you know, they're totally aligned. Does it mean that the, so the town manager is, is never disagreeing with you in terms of the request? Is that what that indicates? Yeah, so uh, when hmm. when I when we submit as department heads submit our budget, that's the 2023 request line item. And then that gets submitted to the town manager. Um, he has a chance to sit down with us, review those line items, and make any adjustments that he sees appropriate. Um, so it, it, the salaries is, is pretty easy. The salaries are if somebody has a step increase, um, then, they, then they move up. Um, if they don't have a step increase, there's um, some people in here. The department coordinator is is maxed out as far as steps go, so there's a zero percent increase in, on that. So, um, but you you two, you two have had, had discussions and you've ended up uh, coming to consensus on, on the lines. Yes. But, um, Marlo, Marlo, we're 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 still basically going through the uh, salaries for the most part at this point, and and some of the necessary salary programs. As we get deeper into this budget, you'll see that they're not necessarily always in lockstep. Okay. So, as, as so far, you know, 100%, you are correct. They they have been pretty much matched, uh, value for value. As we get through this, you'll real you'll see they're they're not the same throughout the whole way. The okay. other piece, the other Chris. piece. Go ahead. Yes, Dennis. Um, town engineer is that a full time salary or part time? So the town engineer position is funded um, forty five percent out of water. Um, the DPW director is fifty percent out of water. The GIS te technician is fifty five percent out of water. Um, <clears throat> then, as we get into the the sewer account, um, we'll see the percentages for out of paid out of sewer, and then when we get down to highway. Um, okay. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So the other the other thing with this budget, um, you know, this this budget doesn't go through the board of selectmen. So this is this is something that's brought forth by the water and sewer commission or elected officials. Um, you know, officially they have um, you know authority over um, over this budget. So Bill Bill does take a look at it. George and Marie do look at it. Um, it's a little more cursory than than some of the other budgets that we'll go through tonight. All right. Any other questions on water salary? Okay. All right. Um, so now we can look at water expenses. <clears throat> um, so water expenses, we have um, a lot of just level funded, um, realizing that that. The budget's been right the last couple of years or, or close enough that we didn't feel a need to increase. Um, we do have electricity is going up $20,000, 5%. <laughs> uh, we brought our third treatment plan online last year um, and we did increase that budget a year ago, realizing we didn't bring it up far enough. So we've increased that to, to try to cover the you know proposed electricity expenses. Um, Purchase of water. This is an, an odd line item. People don't understand, always get confused and, and question, not really confused. They question why we have a purchase of water line item within the water department. Um, it's um, 
it's actually something that the town of Foxboro has some residents that are attached to Mansfield's water main. So East Belcher Road and Spring Street, um, there is no Foxboro water main over there. So we actually have our meters in those houses. We bill those residents. Um, we then turn that revenue over to Mansfield. Uh, it's included in an intermissible agreement that we have with Mansfield. Um, so that's something that um, even earlier today, Raphael asked, asked that question, reach out and ask that question. So um, we have um, emergency repairs. Um, I know Bob is on. And if Bob would unmute, I'll let him talk about the emergency repairs. This is a new line item this year. Good evening. Hi. Um, the emergency repairs comes from, we recently had a inspection for a mass DEP. And one of the things that they require under financial capacity is to have a emergency repair line. Now, typically this line would have upwards of like 100, 120,000 in it. But being the very first year we just wanted to keep it small. It's pretty much a placeholder. The intent is if there's a very large expense of some equipment explodes or whatever that we can do the repair without being forced to have a special town meeting right then and there. And those procedures, we still have to work out with George and Marie. So this year, that's why we kept it small. Thanks, Bob. Um, some of the other line items, big big line item monitoring and testing services. Um, this this really came into um, play and grew um, with the PFAS testing that has been required. Um, DEP has put some new regulations in place. Um, I say new; they've been in place um, probably almost about two years now. Um, that require us to do additional testing on the water that that was not previously required. So that's taken a pretty significant jump. Um, I had a note to ask you about that. They increased the sensitivity, right? Am I, am I remembering that right? And that I think threw one of the wells out or I'm trying to remember the details from a year ago. Yeah, so we have the um, EPA set a limit at 70 parts per trillion. Massachusetts set a limit at 20 parts per trillion. Um, the well that's currently up on Route 1 that's been offline for a number of years now, um, when we last tested it, it was above the 20. Um, anything that goes above the 20 requires a public uh, notice, which you know, lets everybody know, you know here's, here's what this um, chemical is, here are some of the side effects of, of having too much of it in the system. Um, you know, the Massachusetts has gone above and beyond and set that limit lower. Um, significantly lower than what EPA has. Um, so we, we're currently, all of the wells that are in use are below the 20. Um, we do have our Chestnut Street plant, um, which is is below the 20. It's our, our last month sample, it was at 17 parts per trillion. Um, again, if we creep any month gets above that 20, then um, we need to put that notice out and, and then start to look at treatment options um, for okay. PFAS removal. The issue with PFAS is that it's not removed through the same green sand filters that we have currently in place. Um, and as those were getting built and designed, PFAS was not something that was being talked about. So um, we've actually just brought a, an engineering firm in to take a look at the Chestnut Street plant that's the closest um, to the 20 limit to you know, figure out what our what our options are, what the design costs would be, what the construction cost might might be, so that if there's some of this big infrastructure money coming um, to Foxborough, you know, and we're looking at a ten million dollar plant, then you know that's something that we could apply for, you know, through the federal federal recovery act money that's coming out. Okay, that was helpful. Thank Chris, you, uh, 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 Chris. Uh, uh, this has been uh, an issue for several years. Right now, I think. Natick is in the process of starting up their PFOS uh, system. Uh, they, I think that was a $3 million grant. I, I don't remember the numbers, but um, I, I don't know whether um, you could get money from similar sources or 
or, or what, but uh, it would be it would pay to look at that because that's the P force is only going to go one way. And it's not done. Yeah, yeah, and that's that was one of the, during the conversation we had with the engineering firm. Um, you know, they were talking about funding options and um, SRF, the state revolving fund, is one of the options that's out there. Historically, that's always been a loan program. So it's you're actually taking it out at a two percent or three percent interest rate and paying it back, which we've had pretty good luck um, with our bonds over the last you know five or six years. However, we think that the Recovery Act money that the state's going to get will go through that SRF funding program um, and come out as as a as a grant versus a loan. So we are we're definitely looking at what our options are grant wise. Um, what's what's out there for funding. To help supplement our our budget. Um, let's see, contracted services is going up. Um, that for the majority of that that line item is actually spent down at the Witch Pond treatment plant. Um, we have um, when that plant was was permitted and built, going back 12, 13 years ago. Um, there were concerns about the cedar swamp that's down there. Um, so uh, DEP and, and the other state agencies um, put a, a pretty tight list of restrictions and monitoring on that site. Um, and that's, we, we are spending close to $100,000 a year just on that one site, looking at the cedar swamp, um, the vegetation, you know, the water levels in the swamp. So um, we're, we're continuing to have to do that. We asked for some reprieve on it after a decade of of information and we have not gotten any yet. So we're gonna keep pushing for that, but that's that line item stays there and has gone up a little bit um, since since we <clears throat> um, set that up. Um, chemicals, that's, you know, that's what we add into the system again, when we added in our third treatment plant, we boosted that number up a year ago, um, so we're we're comfortable with it staying at 325 um, for the time being. We bid our a lot of our our services, our supplies actually get bid out on a regional basis. So we have a, a services group that has 20, 26 towns in it now, and we build a lot of our construction services, a lot of our chemicals, a lot of our supplies through that group. So we get some pretty good um, pricing based on the quantities that we're putting out there um, from those 26 towns. Um, our services and main pipes, we just combine these two. Um, we hadn't really been, there's really no need to have them separated out. Um, if we're buying pipe, if we're you know buying material for whether it's mains or services, um, we combine those two items. That's why you see a $40,000 jump in one line item and then the, the drop in the next one. Um, fire hydrants, we've actually been replacing 20 to 25 fire hydrants per year. Um, so we're, we're pushing that number up a little bit more to cover those expenses. Hey, Chris. Uh, yes. Yeah. Good. Just because I know this is going to come up later. Um, can you go over diesel and gas right now? Because you do have it dropping out. Sure. So the, yep. So the. The diesel and gasoline uh, line items, um, and actually this was, yeah. So the diesel fuel and gasoline, as, as you'll see in the other, other budgets that we go through, um, those have been pulled out of each individual budget and are gonna get paid out of the um, central maintenance budgets. Um, so these budgets have, have decreased and you'll see it in, in the highway tree and park line items as we go through later on. Um, that those have been pulled out of this, these budgets and will be totaled up and added over there by George and Marie um, just for ease of um, tracking and billing purposes. So we do have our fuel system down here. We do track and have monthly reports of which departments are using how much fuel. Um, so, you know, if any departments end up going over what they had been budgeted for, then Marie and George will have a, a mechanism to recapture that funds from those individual budgets. Thanks. Uh, 
Um, I think that kind of goes through the expenses. Any questions on the water expenses? Yeah, um, Chris, uh, the the um, technicians went up. Looks like about a hundred thousand. Is that because you're bringing on more people, or people graduated to a, a different step level? Um, so the water technicians went up about ten thousand, no eleven eleven thousand. Yeah, so that's okay. That, sorry, I was uh, looking at twenty. I was looking at twenty one versus twenty two. It looks like it. So, so last year you had a big jump. Um. Yeah. So budgeted amount. Um. So we had that was we had combined all of the technicians into one line item. So I know she's. We see it here. Basically, what happens is, yeah, the guys are as they get their additional licenses, um, their next level of license, they they move up into the next um, technician level, um, which comes with, you know, a, a, a small pay raise. Um, so I think that that is what's budgeted in that, um, that jump from what we actually spent to what's budgeted. Okay, okay thank you. Yeah. Um, would you explain the principal water CWMP pool eight and pool nine? Sure. So as we get down here, this is all our this is our debt service. <clears throat> um, so these are items. Um, this is all the the principal principal amount of what's been borrowed. Um, all this principal amount, and then the next line item has the interest rate that's that corresponds with those principal balances. Um, so. <clears throat> um, so it, these are bonds. These are bonds. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so the eight and nine, I think those were probably 2008 and 2009, those were taken out. Um, the, two, the pool nine is, is coming off um, as well as the pool eight. So those are, those are both coming off um, this upcoming year. And then the other bigger ones, um, system improvements, well, those are, these are the more recent ones. Um, that we have in place. So just for anybody that doesn't know his in the last six years, um, we have bonded um, three times for the water department improvements. Um, the first one was 16 and a half million dollars. Uh, the next one was 11 and the most recent one was 9.4. So those are all, you know, that's $36 million worth of infrastructure improvements in the last six years um, that have been un undertaken by by the department and really at the push from the commission um, you know going back you know 10 years ago eight years ago when Bob started there was a, a water quality issue in town a, a dirty water issue that um, Bob when Bob started he was told to fix it and Bob no longer gets 40 to 50 phone calls a day like he did when he first started here so um, there are major improvements that have been that have been done. Um, you know, really bringing the, the system up to today's standards and, and you know, future year standards um, to hopefully not have to do that work again and, and set up on maintenance. That's the big thing, too, is the system was forgotten about, neglected, you know, for the first 50 years it was installed. Um, and now we're, we're playing catch up on it. Chris, is which pond owned by the town? Is there is there other... Uh, properties owned by the town. If if we had to get some more water capacity, is there availability in, in you know underground or in, in ponds around? Or are we kind of tapped out? So, the, which which pond wells? So we have currently two permanent wells over there. Um, you know, which are down at the the town town line down the far end of one hundred six. Um, we are currently redeveloping one of the two. Um, we are we are looking to go from a well that was producing 250 gallons a minute, if we were lucky, to something that could potentially produce, you know, 1,500, 2,000 gallons a minute. Um, now, just because the well can produce that does not mean DEP is gonna let us use that. So we have our limit. Um, Bob, Bob, if he wants to chime in, can talk just a little bit about what our permitted flow is. 
um, and kind of where we stand as far as what we have in the ground and what we're able to pull out right now. Okay, right now our daily limit as an average is 3.19 million gallons a day. Um, there is this thing called baseline, which they went back a number of years. So if we go over, it's like 2.1 something, we'll have to put in plans on reductions and conservation and other things. So right now with the new wells that we have down at Chestnut Street, the new wells we have at Oak Street, and when the replacement well comes online at Witch Pond, we're gonna be in excellent shape. Thank you, Bob. Um, so I think right here we see our total um, that, you know, we're actually decreasing our budget by 0.58%. Like I said, uh, the debt service is dropping 124,000, um, which is helping that out. So um, any other questions on water expenses or salaries? Not for me. Okay. All right, so we can go right into sewer. <clears throat> um, the sewer system in, in Foxborough is a smaller portion of, of the town. Um, but we, we currently have about 20% 20, 20 of the town is on sewer. Um, so that sewer goes down through Mansfield um, to a treatment plant that is, is currently owned by the towns of Mansfield, Norton, and Foxborough, um, the MFN uh, treatment plant. So we have monthly board meetings for that system um, that we're a part of. And you know, a lot of our rate and our use is based on what we pay to the MFN to actually treat that, that sewage. Um, so this budget um, is, is increasing 0.6%, uh, which again is pretty, pretty minimal. Um, and, and most of that is driven based on the MFN district um, increases. Um, <clears throat> so again, it's the same um, org chart, um, DPW director, uh, water and sewer superintendent, same admins, same technicians um, that the water department has. Um, the sewer department covers 10% of the DPW director, town engineer, 20% of the town engineer, and 20% of the GIS technician, um, as well as 10% of all the other um, staff members. <clears throat> so you see salaries are going up 2.26%, expenses are going up about half a percent. And then our debt service there is dropping um, a small amount. <clears throat> so these these line items, these increases mirror the water department just at a smaller dollar amount. Um, and for this one, again, the, the water superintendent does not, his salary is paid fully out of um, the water department budget. So you'll see a breakout of the DPW director and town engineer here instead. Um, going into expenses, <clears throat> um, special details. You'll see this throughout the DPW budget. This is for any police details that we hire, any road work that needs to be done, um, and we hire police details. That's what this special details is covering. Um, again, clothe, our electricity um, increasing um, just to cover expenses and increase in electricity. Um, building maintenance, we have. Um, five sewer lift stations in town. Um, and those are, are again, aging. Um, one of them we recently took over um, when we took, bought some capacity back from Cannon Forge. Um, we have a lift station actually down at the end of the Moore Street that had always been privately maintained. The town is maintaining that, that system now. Um, the majority of these lift stations have two, two pumps in them. Um, they have generators, they have um, <clears throat> uh, call out alarms, they have um, meters, flow meters that are attached to them. So those are all things that we take you know, into account when we look at that building maintenance line item. <clears throat> hey, Chris. Yes. 
vehicle maintenance you have at 16,500 uh, for 2021. We have a low number before it, a low number after it, and a low request for this year. Can you maybe run through that real quick? I'd have to dig that up. I, that's something I, I can I can pull up probably later on before we before we sign off or, or get an answer to you afterwards as to why that that was. Um, I'd have to look I'd have to look that up, Dan. All right. Um, system repairs and maintenance. Um, this is something that as, again, as the system ages, um, a lot of the system is PVC pipe, um, but there are some older sections of town that are clay pipe um, <clears throat> that we're looking at doing some work on um, that end up with some I&I &I issues um, and, and leaks that we try to fix. So um, as, as the system ages, we're just pushing that number up to cover those expenses a little bit. Um, Chris, <clears throat> I&I? &I? Uh, inflow and infiltration. So that's water, water getting into into the pipe system. And Lance, Lance is my expert. Lance spent four, almost five years with with the, one of the engineering firms doing I and I work. So um, he's he's got the experience on that. <clears throat> um, sewer Chris, system. Chris, sorry, yep. on that on that second line, systems repairs and maintenance. I'm, I mean, I might be wrong, but I'm going to guess in 2020 and 2021, you didn't budget members that big. So I think I think what happened in 2020 was the as part of the MFN agreement, yeah. um, Mansfield is now allowed to charge the towns that have sewer flowing through their system. So all of Foxborough sewer goes through Mansfield. Um, part of that agreement let Mansfield take our flow is 25% of what Mansfield's flow is. They're able to look at their operating budget, assign a value to what, what is actually associated with Foxborough sewer going through their pipes and charge that back to Foxborough. Okay. When, they, when they did that, the first year they did that, we did not have um, a line item in place for it. So I, that, I, I looked that up and that came out of the sewer repairs and maintenance in 2020. Um, 2021 is is when we started budgeting for it, and that was the, that's the 101,000. Um, and then last year, our current fiscal year bumped up to 105. So that yeah. was that was something that's about 100 100 thousand dollars of that 237 um, would have been down there. That would have been down here. And then do you feel so? I'm just I don't mean to pick on one line, a line item, but that 45,000 for the budget for 2022 does that feel like that's going to come in? I'm just it seems like a very variable line, and I'm just trying to get a sense. Um, yeah, I think I think where we are right now is um, we, we've done a lot in the last couple of years. I think our our 45, um, you know, we're gonna we'll keep a closer eye on it, and, and as we go through the rest of this fiscal year, we haven't had any major repairs that we've needed to do. Okay. Um, so it, it should should be okay, and then the sixty for next fiscal year will will give us a little more flex room on that. Okay. Um, so the sewer sewer collection system cost that's the payment to Mansfield, um, our share of their operating costs for our sewer going through their their system, um, inflow and infil infiltration. This is the I and I line item. So any any time we go out and um, <clears throat> we do camera inspections, we do um smoke testing we can do repairs um that'll come out of that i and i line item um, some of these you'll see we've we've decreased we, we're realizing that we're not using as much telephone um <clears throat> you know we've we've dropped those numbers um you know going down again here's gasoline and diesel this has come out of this this budget that'll get paid out of the central maintenance and <clears throat> what the town what happens with the water and sewer department um, funds is there are um, expenses um, that get transferred from this department and these these funds to the general fund um, health insurance um, <clears throat> the um, we cost share some of the finance department staff some of the hr staff 
So it's, there's actually a, a transfer to general fund um, <clears throat> that covers those. So this will that you know dollar amount for gasoline and diesel fuel will get added to that um, transfer. Um, chemicals, we've realized that we just haven't. <clears throat> the sewer sewer lift stations have not needed the chemicals that <clears throat> that they may have at one point in time. Um, you'll see there's you know zero expenses out of those the last couple of years. Um, so we dropped that down. Um, we are doing some treatment. Um, we have a, a grease treatment in the sewer lift stations now to help um, prevent buildup and any blockages that might occur there. And then the <clears throat> regional sewer assessment, this is our big line item. This is our payment to the MFN. Um, this covers maintenance and operating expenses of the treatment plant, um, <clears throat> as well as the debt service that's associated with that for Foxborough Share. Um, when we did the plant expansion, it was five and a quarter million dollars um, was Foxborough share. So that <clears throat> that assessment covers that um, 20 year or 30 year bond as well. And then everything else is, is pretty much zeroed out. So our sp expenses are going up half a percent. <clears throat> um, these are our small bonds, um, which um, are minimal payments um, with really only a couple of years left on them. So sewer department, we're, we're going up 0.67%. <clears throat> All right. All right, if there are no questions on water and sewer, we'll move on. And I will, if Bob, if Bob wants to, he can, he can exit if nobody has any other questions on water or sewer. I'm good. Thank you, Bob. If uh, if anybody feels like they have a question, they need to direct their Chris or Chris or Bob. Um, I have both their contact information, so let me know. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Bob. All right, let's get to Public Works. <clears throat> 107, all right. So, so Chairman, I just, just wanna let you know I'm back on if anybody's, uh, anybody has any questions. So I'll, I'll continue to monitor from here. Thank you, okay. Bill. Yep. So Public Works. Um, so now we're now we're back to you know a budget that falls under you know board of selectmen guidelines of, of two and a half percent. Um, you know we have an increase of two point four five, um, so we feel pretty good about that um, coming in that under the two and a half. Um, you know some of the the line items have shifted over the last couple of years to try to um, you know streamline our operation, um, put line items where they belong. Um, you know some stuff under administration that um, you know should be under administration versus highway and, and that stuff. So we're just shifting some things around. Um, <clears throat> one of the big things that that's been on the table for a number of years now is stormwater management, um, and along with that comes our the dams in town. Um, so a lot, the majority of our dams are are in poor shape condition, um, significant hazard, and and their items that need to be addressed. Um, you know, in the upcoming years, um, if not sooner, if the ARPA money allows us to, to do so with that. Would dam um, repair or, or that kind of maintenance typically fall into CIP, Chris? Is it big enough or? Yeah, so the, we currently have the, the West Street Dam is going to go out to, to bid um, within okay. the next couple of weeks for construction yep. this summer. Um, we're looking at roughly a million dollars for that construction project. Okay. Um, all right, so within the DPW, we have myself, we have the town engineer and a uh, GIS mapping technician. Um, we have a department administrator and department coordinators, so two administrative staff. Um, the highway, highway division has a supervisor, working supervisor. Currently have uh, a staff, three heavy equipment operators, two equipment operators and two laborers. Um, and I, I will put it out there, the working supervisor and the supervisors, um, they both work. So the, the working supervisor title is a little misleading, thinking that the supervisor does not, but the highway supervisor is 
you know, in the cement, hands-on, asphalt, um, you know, Dane Holes, he's out there um, with his crews on a daily basis um, on top of the, the other um, job description, job items he has to do. Um, same thing, tree and park supervisor, he's on a lawnmower, he's in a bucket truck, he's taking trees down. Um, they, are, they are both working. Um, two heavy equipment operators in tree and park, uh, one equipment operator and two laborers. <clears throat> and then equipment maintenance, we have a supervisor, working supervisor and two mechanics. Um, something you'll see as we go through these lines is that um, a couple of years ago, actually just, just as COVID hit two years ago, um, I was before ADCOM and, and had presented to, <clears throat> in, to add a, a position to the um, equipment maintenance, the mechanics, um, <clears throat> and actually had that approved, um, talked through Bill, um, ADCOM was in support of it, and I was very excited to go to town meeting with that. Um, and then COVID hit, <clears throat> and there, all those new positions got cut. So something we did a year ago, we had some... Um, we had two laborers leave in highway at the same time. Um, it, working internally, we decided to take one of those two positions and, and reallocate it over to the equipment maintenance division. So when we get down to that budget, you'll see that there's an increase in the equipment maintenance division, um, but there's a similar decrease on the highway side. <coughs> um, so in here, we actually have a, a decrease in salaries of 0.33%. Um, expenses are up 5.16. Um, and then we do actually have two capital outlay items this year, which in my eight years going through these budgets in Foxborough is the first time we've had capital outlay um, in the budget, um, <clears throat> all coming in at 2.45%. Two, 2 <laughs> um, and the salaries, I've got it here. Um, <clears throat> This, this budget, DPW director, 40% of my budget uh, salary is covered, 35% of the town engineer and 25% of the GIS uh, technician. <clears throat> so again, we, we had a, a situation where the highway superintendent line item was a little outdated. Uh, we don't have a highway superintendent anymore. Um, and it was also covering two um, salaries. So we broke that out this year. Um, transparency so you can see the DPW director and the town engineer salaries separated out. <clears throat> um, department administrator, coordinator both have steps. Um, our GIS mapping te technician um, has a step. Um, and then that is the administrative piece. So that's, that's really who's in the office. <clears throat> Next piece for salaries highway division. So we have our, our supervisor. Um, you'll see some of these positions have 0% or less than 2%. So that means they don't have any steps left. They're maxed out. Uh, <clears throat> we last from last budget to this year's budget, um, or I guess, yeah, last from last year to this year, we, we actually um, moved a laborer up as an equipment operator. Um, so you'll see an increase in the equipment operators line item of 43,000, but you see a similar decrease in the laborers um, line item here. <clears throat> um, and then just a, a small increase in, in overtime, just looking at some, some averages over the last few years, um, just pushing that up a little bit. Um, Tree and Park. So we have our tree and park supervisor, Dave Lauliburn, he retired after 49 years. Um, he was obviously at, after 49 years maxed out. Um, the supervisor who has come in to replace him um, is a newbie. He's only been here for 30 years, um, but is coming in at, at a lower step than Dave was. So there's a savings there. And then when the working supervisor, which is currently vacant, they come in, um, the expectation is they'll come in less than what um, Jim Caffin um, was was at because Jim was maxed out at, as a working supervisor. So um, our, we have two heavy equipment operators. They are both at top step. Um, equipment operators, laborers, they both have some steps, steps available to them. So you'll see 3% increases there. Um, small increase in overtime. And the longevity, this is Dave Laliberti retired. 
So his longevity comes off, off the books for next fiscal year. Um, so you'll see that decrease there for him. Um, equipment maintenance. <clears throat> um, this, these are our mechanics. Um, so the, the um, supervisor and working supervisor both have a step available. Um, and the mechanics are, are in here. I, you know, we actually did allocate the budget in 2022 budget covers both of those mechanics. So that is, that's already in the current year budget. And I think that that decrease we had, we had projected in 2022, what that salary would look like, um, realizing that we were under that. So we've dropped that salary to match up where these, those employees currently are. So Chris, uh, looking at the working supervisor, uh, equipment maintenance, um, 3.1% increase. Is that, is that the value of a step? Yeah. So in the, in the AFSCME contract, the first, I believe six steps are 3% steps. And right. then the, the remainder of those steps are, are 2% steps. Okay. Right. So he's in the, he's still in the first half of that pay scale. Um, so he, there's a 3% step available. Right. So if there's a 2% COLA, then it's a 5% increase. Correct. Right. Okay. All right. Any other questions on salaries? Okay. All right. Expenses. Um, so this is, is broken down uh, similar to the salaries where there's the administrative piece and then highway and then train park and then equipment maintenance. Um, so a lot of these line items are, are the same titles. They're just broken out by, by division. Um, so <clears throat> electricity, heating, fuel, these are things you'll see. There's a couple of years where there was nothing in them. They were actually in the highway line items. So we moved those under administrative. That covers not only the office building here, but the garage next door, um, building maintenance. Um, as we work through capital, um, the, the garage itself is 50 plus years old and has not had much work done to it. So um, there are items that, that need to be done until we get to do a full, full rehab on that. Um, stuff like replacing downspouts, um, doing some, some work on the building itself, the block. Um, some of the, the corners are actually starting to fall, fall apart on that cinder block building. So we're looking to do a little bit of work on that. Um, a little more in the next year. Um, <clears throat> you'll see throughout the training and development um, has been increased throughout the budget. Um, we currently, I currently sat through or recently sat through a series of OSHA courses put on through, through Maya and uh, the town's insurance company um, to bring the town up to <clears throat> the standards and following the OSHA standards that we're supposed to be following now. So um, as we, we work through that, we're going to have to do more training, um, more development. And I'm, I'm a firm believer as in general of training the employees we have, um, you know, I'd rather have them trained than, uh, than not trained. So, um, stormwater management, this is something that, um, I believe originally I, I had, when, when it first came in as a line item, um, I was looking at, you know, roughly $70,000. $75,000. It didn't fit in the budget at that time. So I'm trying to creep it back to that point. Um, so we're looking at $50,000 for that. That includes our catch basin cleaning. Um, we do have a catch basin cleaner, but it's roughly 30 years old and typically breaks every time it goes out. So we do have a contract for, for somebody to come in and do that catch basin cleaning. Um, you know, also covers a lot of our educational material that needs to go out. We work with the Neponset River Watershed Association. Um, <clears throat> so they do a lot of, of great work for us and, and a lot of the surrounding towns and they do it at a pretty reasonable rate. So um, we're kind of benefiting from that, that organization, um, but it does cost us some money to do that. So um, we are working on that. Um, engineering architecture services. So currently, you know, we have a small line item, $10,000 that just got added in to current year budget. Um, Historically, any of our 
engineering services would have to come out of a capital line item as a as a larger project. Um, so this this lets us get started on some of these projects before we get to that point, um, before we're able to request or ready to request capital funding for these projects. Um, also lets us do some some smaller projects, survey work um, that might need to be done on a small scale. Um, <clears throat> again, here um, you'll see the gasoline has been pulled out um, of the of this line item. That'll get added in to the to the um, central maintenance budget. Um, so there's not a lot of, not a lot else increased on on that side. Um, so special details here. We start the highway division line items. And special details are our police details. Um, clothing allowance is a small increase. Um, so union contract has has boot allowances. Um, we provide all our safety gear, um, sweatshirts, t-shirts, high vis stuff. Everything's everything comes out of this line item. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice some empty spots here. Um, electricity, heating, fuel, building maintenance, vehicle maintenance. We pushed everything into the divisions where it belongs. So the first three are up in the admin piece and then vehicle maintenance is down in the equipment maintenance line item. Um, so that's this, actually the same as it is current year budget. <clears throat> um, roadway maintenance services has a small increase. Um, anytime we're out filling potholes, um, repairing catch basins, drain manholes, um, you know, it comes out of, out of this roadway maintenance um, line item. Again, training and development, I have an increase here. The other thing that, that has come up is um, we currently only have <clears throat> one employee who has a, a class A CDL, I guess two now, um, who have class A CDLs. Um, it, as regulations have changed and equip, our equipment has changed, um, we're gonna require more drivers with a class A CDL. So it's either, it's typically the, the trailer or hot box or wood chipper that's getting pulled by a truck, certain truck, the com combined weight limit of those vehicles um, will trigger a class A license to drive those. So um, <clears throat> a current, as of the two weeks from now or next week, in order to get a CDL license or upgrade a CDL license, you'll have to go through a federal, federally mandated course. Um, and those courses run anywhere from um, two thousand to five thousand dollars a piece. So we've had a couple of people go through it for their class B, um, and they run about thirty five hundred dollars as the classes we found. Uh, so resurface material. This is if we're doing um, any any small milling work with our again with our own crews. Um, so as as asphalt prices have gone up. Um, so do sort of these budgets, unfortunately. Um, here we start special details. This is our train and park division. Um, again, minimal increases here with the exception of, of training and development and safety equipment. Um, so we have some small increases there. Again, I'm gonna need, need CDL drivers for train and park as well that the wood chipper that we pull um, you know, is heavy enough that requires a CDL class A license. And then the last group, this is our equipment maintenance division. Um, you'll see increases here, um, basically parts, materials are, have gone up, um, vehicle maintenance, you know, an increase of $2,500. Um, <clears throat> this, this includes all three divisions, um, in that line item, um, you'll see gasoline and diesel fuel has been pulled out of, of this division. <clears throat> Parts and accessories, vehicle tires and, and tubes and, and lubricants um, have, all, have all increased over the last few years. Um, so as, as those parts increase, <clears throat> um, we're pushing the budgets up. And then shop equipment, there are, there are items that just, um, don't really fall under parts or accessories. They're they're smaller stuff for the shop itself. So we have a new line item, uh, five thousand dollar line item, just to cover some of those basics that are <clears throat> that are needed around the shop itself. 
So Chris, I have a question. Yep. So in the last year, we've been hearing a lot about you know supply chain uh, issues across the uh, the country, as well as now you know seven percent inflation. Uh, how much have the supply chain issues, you, inability or delays in getting getting parts affected you? And it doesn't appear like uh, from a price increase that that's affected you as much. We we've done okay. Um, there are some some vehicles that when we need a part there instead of having it you know back on the road the next day or the day after they're sitting for a couple weeks um but it's nothing nothing really long term um so we've been able to to keep just about everything on the road unfortunately one of the things that that suffers are actually the school buses um a lot of the the parts that come in for the school buses a lot of the the work there's a lot of warranty work that gets done on the school buses um, and those, those, when they go to the dealership for work, those tend to sit for two or three months before they come back. Um, you know, not only from, from a work perspective and, and the, the dealership having enough hands to fix those, but actually, um, getting the parts that are needed for those buses as well. Um, but as far as the stuff we, we deal with on a daily basis, we've, we've done all right with it. Okay. Thanks. Hey Chris, does the um, tree department have a broken down line item for the, the planting of street trees? Is that something you budget each year, a certain amount of uh, money? It is, it is not. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, we had the planting department actually got a grant um, to plant trees and it, it happened to be around it was for the historic district. So it was, it was basically downtown Central Street, Carpenter Street, Leonard Sherman. It was kind of that neighborhood. And I think we had funding for about a dozen trees and we couldn't find people to take them. <laughs> um, you know, we, we end up taking down, you know, 40 to 50 trees a year. Um, a lot of them are in, in heavily wooded areas, Mill Street, Prospect Street. Um, so we do, we do plan on, taking trees down, but we, we have not budgeted anything for replacement of trees. So you need, basically, if you have a budget, you need private landowners to volunteer to have, have them placed. Is that what you're saying when people won't take them? Yeah, typically, typically we don't own much beyond like the back edge of the sidewalk. Um, you know, and, and what we've started doing with all the new subdivisions is we've actually been pushing all those new trees that come in um onto private property um it's it gets them away from the edge of the street it gets them away from the curbing and the sidewalk which causes issues you go through a lot of these neighborhoods that had trees planted you know in the in the 50s 60s and 70s and they were planted either in the three foot grass strip between the the curbing and the sidewalk or right behind the sidewalk and and all it does is destroy the sidewalk um and the curbing so we've actually been pushing those back onto private property, um, which leave it up to the property owners to maintain. Um, that way, if they fall down, if they die, it's not something that's getting added to our rotation that we have to then um, take on. So if you if you had a budget line item for like $10,000 a year, you don't, you don't think that would go anywhere or help the town in any way? Um, I think it would be, I think it'd be hard to, to find 20, 20 people that would want a tree in their front yard, unfortunately. Wow, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> two, two different questions. Um, uh, Chris, uh, last year's uh, town meeting, you were one of the proponents for the stretch energy code. Um, is there any plans on bringing that back up again? Um, I, I think one of the big pushes on that last year, Jack, was, was COVID. And nobody wanted to deal with the, the increase, cost increase, um, while material costs were, were as high as they were. Um, those material costs have, have not dropped back to where they were. I don't, I don't think they'll ever get back there. But I, I think the town will, will bring that forward again at some point in time. Um, it, at this point, it has, has not been talked about it as far as coming back this spring. Um, but maybe it's, it's a fall town meeting or, or a year from now uh, proposal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, uh, if you look at the state, most of the cities and towns in Massachusetts have adopted the stretch energy code. 
and uh, and and I think not having it uh, 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 bars you from certain grant applications. And so I'm wondering whether maybe it makes sense for I'm not sure who it is that would take the lead on that, but to bring it back not not for the spring but for the fall town meeting. Sure. No, I, I, like I said, it's I think it's something that. You know, when I when I was talking about, it, I think there was some misinformation brought out on town meeting floor. Um, there were, you know, I know there was one developer that got up and spoke against it. Um, we also just had a new building commissioner start this week, um, so that's something that that may maybe he can get he'll get brought into um, and has experience on. Um, I haven't talked to him about it yet, but uh, may very well bring him back, bring him into the mix. Jim, and I'll just add to, to Jack's question that uh, to Chris's response. Chris is 100 percent right. This was uh, defeated at town meeting on the on the advice. I believe it was Greg Spear who spoke to this issue, and um, and I have a lot of respect for Greg, and and he's been involved in the building trades for a long time. And he said that his concern was that dealing with this issue at this juncture in time, where elevate the price of materials was so elevated. <coughs> And so, and so far, we've not seen that come down um, in any significant way. And I doubt we will see that until probably later this year, uh, maybe early next year. So we, there doesn't seem to be an appetite to push forward on that at this point. I agree with you, Jack, that, that a lot of communities have this, and, and we're actually big proponents of doing it, um, because that would then make us eligible for green community status, and that we would then become eligible for grants uh, through green community under that basis. You know, Bill, I, I, I handled that last year uh, at, the, the, uh, at the town meeting, and uh, I, I thought it had a lot of merit, really. Yeah. And, I, and I thought the timing last year was actually pretty good. And I know that uh, at least one person spoke out at the town meeting and kind of carried, carried the vote. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be uh, a, a couple of years before um, the landscape is favorable to bring that forward again mm -hmm. because of the increase in in uh, building costs and valuations and and things that just would mitigate against uh, people feeling com comfortable taking a risk of, of adding any expense, even though the data showed that you, you recover the expense, you know, pretty right. quickly. So, I agree. Yeah. Uh, the second uh, question I uh, the second question I had for Chris uh, somewhere in the budget is um, your road and sidewalk. Uh, allocation from the meal stacks i don't see that yeah so that'll that'll come through um the capital process um so that's that'll that'll go through the cip process in march the first weekend of march we have our cip committee meeting um that comes through as capital funding so that that won't be seen in the operating expenses um so i do have a capital capital line item for the chapter 90 funding um, and then I know, you know, we're Bill, Bill, George and Maria keeping a close eye on what the, the meals tax projection is going to be. Um, and if there's, you know, extra funding from the meals tax um, to offset that the chapter 90 funds, then, then it'll go that direction. Well, the, the, uh, the proposal in this budget is 350,000 from the meals tax, but the meals tax is projected to raise a million dollars. So we should be seeing 500,000 on uh, roads and sidewalks, not 350. The, the, uh, the other side of that though, Jack, is the issue that we still pay um, the uh, OPEP first. And that's a, that's a million dollar expense and that comes off the top. So, uh, and more often than not, what happens is the there isn't a whole lot left to pay for road expenses under those conditions. Now, now what's been talked about lately, and uh, and you know, I do I do expect that this will be a good year. You know, we'll probably get a good response back on on um, meals tax this year uh, because we're starting to see the numbers come back on our uh, on our returns. Um, but even with that, it'll be it'll be difficult to to actually get much over a million dollars this year. So once, so that was why the commitment was made in the policy that once OPEB is paid, uh, that there would be a, a, a more of an alignment of that money to be put to, directly towards roads and sidewalks. Uh, sir, because as, obviously- sir, as we've talked in the past, there was a commitment mm -hmm. made to the voters 
the 50% would go for roads and sidewalks. No. There was no uh, no. uh, rating of OPEB as higher than roads and sidewalks. They were equal. And, no, so, um, so, well, so and, they, I think there's a, therein lies the, the challenge because uh, all the research that I've had and I've talked to the people that were actually at the meeting said that's not accurate. It was, it was said that, that there would be uh, the, the money that would be used for that would be um, that the money, the OPEB would be paid first. And then um, it would, and it would only be paid for OPEB and roads and sidewalks. It would or roads rather. It would not be for anything but that. But there was no commitment for as far as a percentage amount. And that's that's been told to me by several people who were actually at the meeting themselves. And so that's an invention. Oh. So that's an invention after a town meeting. At town meeting, as was reported in the Foxborough Reporter, it's a it's to be a 50-50 split. It was it was inc it was incorrect. Bill, to Bill, hold on, hold on one second. I, I just yeah. want to make one point yeah. that the adcom as a whole did not approve. We did not vote to approve the financial guidelines of the town based on this in a previous meeting. So, you know, you guys can have this conversation if you want right mm -hmm. now, but. As a whole, we decided that what you're saying, Bill, might not necessarily be true. And that's not to say that Jack is exactly correct, but we agreed that there is enough of a disagreeance, to be honest, that we do not feel that we can support that exact claim at this time. So Dan, so, so Dan and Jack, can we, can we time out here? I communicated all that to Bill. And I told all of you that I was going to have him back to talk to us, and we've agreed to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, he's going to be presenting general government anyway in a few mm -hmm. weeks, and so we can um, have that conversation there. Perfect. Yep. Fair enough. All right. Um, so the last two two lines here. Um, fall under capital outlay um, for everybody, anybody that doesn't know capital outlay is our, our items um, or projects that are um, projected to be under $25,000 or um, last less than five years. So, um, you know, similar to, to what the police chief does, he has, you know, you'll see him, he has uh, police cruisers factored in his budget through capital outlay because um, they're, you know, on the road less than five years. Um, I have two pieces of equipment that come in at less than $25,000. Um, we have a, a tire changer, um, which is a piece of equipment that the mechanics use. Um, this, this is something that actually takes, takes a tire off of the rim um, and will set the new tire on the rim. Um, mostly used for school buses. This, this piece is used for school buses um, and all of our, our larger trucks and heavy equipment. So this is something that we have two of these in place. We have a smaller one for uh, SUVs and sedans. And then this one actually has um, a lift on it. So instead of set of the mechanic or two mechanics in reality, trying to lift, um, you know, a hundred pound tire onto this piece of equipment, this actually has a, a mechanical lift that'll bring the tire up off the ground um, and set it on top of the rim. And then it sets it on the rim itself, um, seals it and does the whole thing. So I have that as $15,000. And then I also have um, a paint machine. So the, the tree and park division, um, stripes fields for um, town sports, high school, um, soccer, football, baseball, uh, track and field. They actually, they stripe the, the field for um, javelin and discus. Um, we do do some work for, for little league and for ba youth baseball and and youth soccer, although they do a lot of their own striping as well. Um, <clears throat> so we had a paint machine this past year that broke down after, I think about 12 years, um, it was not repairable. Um, so this is something we're looking to, to replace for this upcoming um, season. We, we actually had to dig out one of, our <clears throat> one of our older machines that had been sitting in a garage um, that's probably 30 years old. Um, <laughs> And it, it was still kicking, but it's not not a good machine to keep on long term. So um, we have two capital LA items um, for a total of thirty thousand um, dollars. 
<clears throat> so with with salaries, expenses, and these two capital outlay, um, we are coming in at two point four five percent. How do the the two capital outlay items come to fifteen each? Is that just a coincidence in how much they cost? Um, it it is. I have I do have quotes um, on both. There, you know, the the tire changer was fourteen and change. Um, the paint machine, um, you know, depending on which model we get, um, you know, could be could be under fifteen. It could be a little over fifteen. Um, okay. So. Okay. Any questions on on that? We got three other smaller smaller budgets we can go through pretty quickly. I think. All right. Um, next up is snow and ice. Um, snow and ice is a budget that historically does not get adjusted. Um, it's it's a budget that we are we are legally able to overspend deficit spend and then um, raise the funds to um, cover that overage in the next fiscal fiscal year budget. So this is something that not knowing what we're going to spend from one year to the next has just stayed at $216,300. Um, you know, I have a small increase capital outlay here is, is a plow. Um, so we have a small increase from $12,000 to $13,000 to cover the expense of one plow uh, per year. It's a funny one. So if you, so we don't want to reduce this budget, right? That has a consequence. Correct. Can you talk to the, the people who are newer what that consequence is? Sure. So this is one, it's, it actually kind of goes both ways where if, if we increase it, we can not decrease it and then continue to deficit spend the account. So that's, that's why it's, it's always just state level funded. So if we have a, a mild winter, you know, we're not allocating these funds um, and locking them up for something else. Um, so if, if we were to increase it, we can then no longer decrease it. Right. If we decrease it, then we can't deficit spend it anymore. Yep. Okay. Um, so, and this, this is one that, you know, Dan, Dan and Raphael and I had, had some conversation on Bill, Bill, George and Marie talked about it as well. Um, you know, to, to maybe at some point in time in the future, you know, right fit this budget a little bit more. Uh, make some adjustments, you know, looking at a five year, seven year average and, and make some adjustments to it. But um, we didn't feel like this was this was the right year to do that. So um, we're going to go up just the one thousand dollars for that plow. All right. No questions there. Um, then here here are the line items themselves um, is the breakdown. Um, so equipment, rental, and lease. Um, this is for the contractors that come in. Um, when they plow, we have 21 pieces of equipment that come in from contractors. Um, <clears throat> On-call standby, that's something that for the winter months, we have um, five staff members that are, that are here and ready to respond. You know, first respond for any, any ice events, any salting that needs to be done. They're, they're here. Um, they're local, they're not traveling, they're, they're designated to come in on that first response as needed. Uh, street salt, that's, that's what we put on the ground. We do have some chemicals, we use magnesium chloride um, that goes down with the salt, um, helps to expedite the melting process of any salt that's out on the ground. So that's a 0.46% increase on snow and ice. Question on, uh, uh, actually two questions. Uh, Marlo pointed out earlier that your request and the town manager approval almost always uh, was the same. This budget, it's not. What was it that you're asking for that, uh, you, uh, that uh, Bill said no some other time? Reach sure, so, uh, <laughs> It, in the initial um, guidance I, I received from, from Bill, George, and Marie on this budget, it was to 
look at the five year, seven year hit average of what we had actually been spending and, you know, try to right fit the budget a little more, make, make adjustments that were needed um, to, to those line items so that we had a budget that was a little closer to what we actually spend on average. So as you'll see here, the 2020 budget for overtime, we, we have not budgeted anything for overtime. So, you know, the first storm we have, we're gonna deficit spend this line item. Um, so I looked at our average, you'll see 2020 expenses was $60,000, 2021 was 111. So I put a request in there of $50,000 um, as one of those increases. Um, you know, you'll see down here, street salt, um, we've been spending, you know, anywhere from 100 to 160 thousand dollars in street salt. Um, so I put a line item increase of 100 thousand dollars in there, um, you know, from 68. <clears throat> so those are those are two of the line items, the bigger line items that I had put in requests for. Um, that when Bill sat and looked at the budgets as a whole, talked to George and Marie a little more, um, decided this was not the year to to make those adjustments. And a similar comment about the vehicle parts and accessories. I'd be interested to hear yes. Bill's rationale for why he doesn't think anything should be budgeted for overtime based on the 2020-2021 actions. I'm sorry. So as Chris has pointed out, um, this is one of those budgets you can actually deficit spend and raise later on. So it's a case where there's no reason for us to really budget that number um, because if in fact you budget it and then try to reduce it later on, you can't do that. So um, I think the, the the rationale here is that we will we will we'll address it after the season's over um, and then and fix it at that point. But I think the, the concern here is that we don't want to lock ourselves into an expense going forward that we don't necessarily have to make. And I think that's uh, there, while there are times when it's it gets pretty high. Um, it's still something that we can usually resolve at the end of the year. So um, we think that you know, from an overall budgeting perspective and strategy, um, we didn't want to lock ourselves into an expense, again, that we didn't have to make later on down the road. Hey, Bill, um, does that number go to town meeting or special town meeting? When does that get resolved? Well, it gets resolved usually at the end of the year when we try and do some, uh, I may do some reserve, I may do my, uh, internal budget transfers. At the end of the year, we'll try and fix that then. Or we can also raise it on, on the recap uh, at the end of the year as well, because it's one of those things. You, it's one of the legal budget items you can actually raise. Uh, you can go up with what you can deficit spend legally as far in the, in on the Massachusetts law that allows you to do that. So we do a transfer for everybody's benefit at the end of every fiscal year right. just to clean up items. I can't remember seeing a snow and ice, but you know that just might be me not remembering the details. Yeah, more often than not, we we, we usually raise it on the recap. Um, but more often than not, because um, if the number is significant, you want you can do that, and it's it's uh, it's something we deal with at the uh, at the end of the year. Okay. Okay. You know, I, I'm the, not uh, saying this this happens in, in Foxborough, but my experience, Bill, is if, if you put an overtime number in a budget, that becomes the the floor. Right. <laughs> you know, for the no, that's true. The that's actually true. Actually true. Right. Actually true, and, and I, you know, I think these guys do a pretty good job of managing the budget. So, but I just think that that what's what bothers me is the ability that it locks us in to that number, and I don't think we want to do that if we don't have to. That's just been my experience, and I've been doing that for a long time, and I never really felt that it was necessary to to put those numbers in with, with that kind of limitation. In it. Thanks, that makes sense. Uh, I have a second question for Chris. And that is um, the road salt. Now, the more salt you put on the road, the more ends up in our water supply. Um, is it all? It, it, um, is it all magnesium chloride? Is it or is it uh, sodium chloride as well? I assume our sodium levels are gradually creeping up over the years. Yeah. So we, you know, it's it's an interesting dilemma where a number of years ago people used it was a sand salt mix. So they were putting down, you know, 50-50. Um, and what what DEP came out with the stormwater, stormwater management guidelines was and regulation was stop using sand. Um, so what that did was increase, well, I shouldn't say that. Um, <clears throat> the perception of us using more salt has increased because we're only using salt. Um, the 
the liquid magnesium chloride, so that's a liquid application, um, actually helps decrease the amount of salt that we, we need to put down to melt um, any, any snow or ice that's on the road. Um, and actually something I've been, I've been taking some, some sitting in on some webinars and stuff um, and round table discussions with some people, other people in the state and, and New England, um, there are towns that use um, liquid brine. So they're actually making salt water um, and putting it down um, with a with a tank and putting spraying it onto the roads and they're spraying it anywhere from you know 24 to 48 hours ahead of time before a storm comes in and really the goal of the salt you know before a storm is to prevent prevent that bond from the snow and, and prevent a pack um, afterwards it's really just you trying to put down enough to dry out the roads um, and prevent any any freezing after the fact um, the the liquid the liquid brine which, you know, I've, I've looked at some systems and, and have to get some more details on what something like that would cost um, to actually set up. Um, it decreases the amount of salt that you put on the road. So you put the liquid brine down ahead of time and, you know, the numbers are somewhere. If, if we're doing just salt, um, just rock salt, you know, we're probably putting down three to 400 pounds per lane mile if you do a liquid brine, you're reducing that number down, you know, closer to 50 um, pounds of, of salt per lane mile. So you're actually reducing the amount of salt going out there. Um, but it helps, you know, speed up the melting and, and prevents that bond uh, both before and after. So it's, it's something we're working on um, and looking at and, and trying to advance the, the system in town and trying to control how much we put down. Um, you know, we're actually, uh, I'm working with the crew this weekend, um, where they're all going to, anybody who has a salt truck is going to have a clipboard with a spreadsheet and they're going to keep track of how many loads of salt go into that truck. And I've got how many miles that, that route is and how much they drive. Um, and we're going to start to calibrate the, the trucks themselves. So we put out the right amount of salt instead of just putting it down. However, each, each driver feels it should go down. <laughs> But ultimately, it all ends up in our water supply. That's why it's so important not only yeah. to put it down effectively, but to um, um, put down as as little as we can. Correct. Yep. Yep. And that and that's something that we we you know report on in our annual report for our stormwater management as well. Our MS4 annual report has a, a line item for you know how much salt we we used um, throughout the year. Um, and any any changes, any liquids that we use, anything that we we're doing to improve um, the salt usage. So we're looking at it from that that side as well. Thank you. All right. So no more questions on snow and ice. We'll go to street lighting. <clears throat> so street lighting. Um, Street lighting is, is actually going to decrease this year. Um, we've been holding it, um, you know, the last couple of years. We, this is a, a line item where five years ago, we took a, undertook a project to convert all the street lights to LED. Um, we, we did a five-year payment on those, those fixtures and that, and that project. Um, 2022, we, we made actually a couple of weeks ago, our final payment on that five-year program. Um, so now we're able to decrease our, our street light budget. Uh, we spend approximately $50,000, $55,000 on electricity every year, um, which was, <clears throat> was somewhere in the $150,000 range previously. Um, and then we have, you know, as we get towards, you know, year six and beyond on these fixtures, we're gonna start to see some replacements. Um, this, this budget also covers not only the street lights, but it covers the um, traffic signals in town, um, any of the yellow red flashers that we have in town, um, any crosswalk head, head signals um, are covered under this budget. So um, <clears throat> we're looking at 50, roughly $55,000 for electricity cost and about $20,000 for maintenance costs moving into FY23. 
So Chris, Chris, is your experience that the, uh, the benefit claims for cost reduction and extended duration for LED is, uh, is uh, experiences that it's, uh, it's true, it's real? Yeah, I mean, just just on the electricity side alone, um, the way National Grid um, charges us per fixture, they charge us per wattage. So if if a fixture is preset at forty nine watts, they they charge us a certain amount. If it's set at if it's anywhere between fifty and, and ninety nine watts, it's a larger amount. And then anything over one hundred watts just you know escalates from there. So everything that we had, all the the halogen the um, sodium um, halogen bulbs that we had um, you know were a much larger electricity charge from national grid so um, all that work has been done um, with national grid and, and we're seeing that you know true expense of what the electricity use is now um, <clears throat> and the longevity too they're you know they they told us you know that you're going to see about a 10 percent failure rate um, you know with those fixtures within the first 10 years, but they're projecting 10 year life expectancy uh, out of those fixtures, so. I think that the uh, the key uh, thing is that we actually own the lights now, whereas we, you know, we we used to rent those lights. And so we'd be charged every single year for the use of those those fixtures, which as we can see is what Chris just described, but they weren't, they weren't very uh, efficient to begin with. So when we took on the project, it made sense for us to own these lights and then and then also at the same time we got a grant to, to actually swap them out with leds which then reduced the cost overall cost of the of the uh, of the of the lights themselves to run the lights so uh, we saved on both ends both the the cost of the of the of the fixtures themselves as well as the the operational side okay thanks And Dan, I know um, when we had talked last week, there was a question about um, could this expense line item be broken down um, into more than one line item? Um, talking to George and Marie, um, <clears throat> you know they've they've only seen it as one line item, um, and their their recommendation is just to leave it as as the one street lighting line item um, within this budget. So I did want to just touch base with you and let you know that. Uh, we did. I did follow up on that. Understood. Thank you. And then, Chris, is the seventy-five the expected run rate? I mean, putting aside inflation or whatever going forward, is that the realizing the whole benefit right there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we the last two years we've spent um, fifty-two thousand dollars on electricity, fifty-three thousand dollars on electricity, um, and you'll see that you know the budget. Um, you know, we've had a hundred and ten thousand dollar budget. Um, for the last couple of years. And we had some expenses that came up, repairs that we needed, the, the, the traffic signals, the PED buttons kind of hit us too. Um, but so we're looking at about $20,000 for maintenance moving forward and 55 for the electricity use. Okay, Pe the pedestrian, that's the little buttons they push at the crosswalk. Yep. Just want to make sure I understood, okay. <clears throat> okay. All right, we got one more. Um, <clears throat> solid waste disposal and collection. Um, so this covers, um, and this is a level funded budget. Um, you know, we have 40,000 budgeted current year and we have 40,000 budgeted um, next fiscal year. <clears throat> um, this is something that we have um, the capped landfill. We have two, we have one that has a solar field on it um, on East Belcher Road. And there's actually a second smaller landfill um, that we inherited from the state hospital um, that's over on Payson Road that actually has a basketball court on it now. Um, <clears throat> so we have some some monitoring that we have to do. The solar field covers the majority of the monitoring over on the landfill, um, the big one in East Belcher. Um, so we have some monitoring that we have to do there. Um, disposal services, we have um, a, a 30 yard dumpster behind the DPW facility. So when um, the fields are in use, we have trash barrels. We have approximately 50 trash barrels around town um, at the various fields and schools. Um, that trash gets collected by the Tree and Park Division um, on a weekly basis, more as needed, um, and, and gets disposed of through that dumpster. We have um, roughly $550 every time that dumpster gets, that's, gets hauled out and swapped out. Um, and it's 
usually on a weekly basis when we're in full swing spring summer and, and fall um, hazardous waste day um, so <clears throat> you'll see a, a small um, expense from fy21 um, we actually did a regional event last year with mansfield and norton um, there was some grant funding available to the three towns to do a, a regional event um, that grant <clears throat> actually covered a, a lot more than than we expected it to um, however that grant is not available this year so we're back up to um, you know what what are having our, our own event on a saturday in the spring here at the dpw facility and those that cost has been increasing um, we do have a state state contract or the the vendors have a state contract so we're able to pull from those vendors they've already gone out and bid um those services um through the state level so um <clears throat> we will have that event event again here and as you see from 2020 it was you know 16 and a half thousand dollars so um, i fully expect to have you know a full a full event again this year um but other than that we're, we're just keeping it level um for the year chris will hazardous waste include rechargeable batteries we do we do take rechargeable batteries yep yep <clears throat> and i know you know dan dan had talked a little bit when we this fourteen thousand dollar number jumped out at Dan when we talked a week ago um, under the pu other public works supplies, um, <clears throat> and we had, we had actually talked about when um, when Lance came on board, we were looking at going through our stormwater regulations again, and the blue um, fifty five gallon plastic drums that we had been using as trash barrels throughout town um, did not meet our stormwater regulations, so we actually had to go out and buy trash barrels with lids on them no holes in the bottom um, so those are the new trash barrels you'll see around at the fields but that's the line item why that's so so high um, <clears throat> and it's you know back down budgeted only a thousand dollars so it's kind of a a one year off oddity and i think that <clears throat> Brings you to the health department. So that wraps me up. Quick question, Chris. Did I see something in the news about a grant? Um, municipal vulnerability, something, something. Yes. So we um this it, it was a continuation. We had um, applied for and received a grant, a planning grant um previously. Um, so that was to look at, you know, it, it's really looking at climate change. Yep. Um, and trying to prepare the town for for that um, so we went through the planning phase of that and as we did that um, you know we worked through and now have a construction grant so we have um, one hundred and sixty three thousand dollars i believe is the dollar amount that we received um, we are looking at um, some some projects throughout town i know lance is on if if, if anybody wants to hear a little bit more about it um i think i saw uh, cocasset flooding on the list which is a subject near and dear to my heart and <laughs> perhaps jack's as well given where we live i don't, I don't know is it is it earmarked because you applied to a grant is that how it works yeah so in, in that grant application we we talked about exactly what we were going to look at um so we had in the planning phase we had identified some of the the problem areas in town the Cocasset street railroad bridge is is one of them that jumps out um, at everybody anytime it rains um, so we were we were focused on that as well as some other um, town-wide uh, green infrastructure um, strategies and designs anything else specific lance or or chris any other okay just checking all right, I'd open up to the ADCOM members. Do you have other questions for any of the guys who presented? Hey, Chris, um, on the uh, five-year plan, I saw that the DPW facility has a study for, for I think, 170, uh, 150,000, and then the following five years, there's 750. So are you planning to rehab it over a four or five-year time span instead of getting all the money all at once? Or would, 
what's uh, the reason behind having 750,000 three years in a row in that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, year one, we're, we're just looking in the 150 included um, $50,000 for really just a feasibility study on the building and the site. Um, and then $100,000 worth of, you know, some, some improvements just to get us started. Um, you know, there, like I said before, there are some, some issues in that building that if we're going to dress up front, um, we'd like to, um, and then it, it was, it was taking really one bay. There, there are three sections of that building, um, taking kind of one at a time and renovating one at a time. And really it was just looking to spread that cost out, um, knowing where the capital budget has been the last few years, um, you know, putting it in as, as a, you know, $3 million or, or 250, um, two and a half million dollar, um, lump sum, but we're, we're working on some other options that might help, help with that. Um, and then there's always, you know, if, if it gets put together and the feasibility study comes through and it, it should be done all at the same time, then, you know, we'll be back to, to look for funding, um, in a different manner. And this might be a, a bill question, but the chapter 90 back in uh, 2018, it was almost a million bucks and it's slowly gone down to 650. Is that a trend bill in the state that there's less chapter 90 money or is that, you know, the last two years COVID really, really wiped it out because because you had 650 for the next five years. So, so what's happened uh, on that, John, is that there was one year where we, we actually had a, uh, a, a $300 million statewide expenditure by the state to on chapter 90. And since then it's gone down to 200 million. And um, and, and the governor's uh, bills, uh, governor's filings have not changed that. I think it was when the governor first came to office, he increased that by $100 million statewide. And then uh, since then it's, it hasn't, it stayed at 200 million. Now, I think what's important about this and something we don't wanna lose sight of is that we just there was just a 1.2 trillion dollar infrastructure bill that was passed at the federal level, which we will then be looking at to try and come to, to address uh, some of the uh, the outstanding issues that we have with regard to uh, roads and sidewalks in Foxborough. So we we're going to be in a in a place where we can start competing for some of that money, and it's our intention to actually do that. So um, I know there was I know certainly holding the conversation that we had earlier. But I do believe there's a way to address that and still get to the same place that you know, everybody's concerned about. Um, but I think that the uh, but but general, to answer your question though, John, that that money was a one-time shot that we got, but we haven't got it back since. There's been there's been a recent push by the MMA to see if if that could be actually adjusted upward, because the the, the right now the state is got, is awash with cash. Uh, in many different ways, they got a lot of they got a big uh, influx of federal money, but as well as the fact that their revenue collections have been far beyond what they expected. And as such, uh, virtually every town in the state is looking for that same infusion of cash to do the same thing we like to do, and that's to spend it on roads, sidewalks. Uh, Bill, a uh, quick question: That same sure. federal money does that have to come through uh, Norfolk County, or does that come straight to Foxborough? It's, it remains to be seen, Dan. We have not seen a, an actual formula on how it's going to be distributed, but I, uh, the last I heard, and I'm going to be hearing more about it shortly, but uh, last I heard was that it's going to be a competitive process. Uh, at least that's what Senator Markey indicated on Saturday this past week, that we can apply for that money. Uh, and I'm not sure where the conditions are. They haven't come out yet. But um, it's going to come over a period of time. I think it's like a six or five or six-year period. Uh, even seven years that we're going to start doling out that money over a period of time. So it remains the answer is I don't know yet. Uh, but if we do, we're hoping that it doesn't go through Norfolk County because that creates all kinds of new issues for us um, in many ways. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think we've seen that before. Have we seen mm -hmm. any of the money that's gone through Norfolk County previously? Has that started to trickle through or is that still being held there? So, so it's interesting you, you point that out because we're just during this past week, we thought uh, actually, two weeks ago, we 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 thought we we we'd made it past that issue um, because there was concern about whether or not we could we could get the, the that money without being limited in terms of how we could spend it. Um, the final uh, ruling from the U.S. Treasury Department indicated that um, that every single town could actually apply for a ten million dollar uh, waiver of of uh, a, a waiver limit on the amount of money that they lost during COVID. 
So for Fox Pro, that number was somewhere in the order of about $4.8 million, which we could have actually put in for the full amount. And then that would not have affected our, uh, does not affect the amount of money and the way we can spend the money effectively coming from the, from the federal government, at least in the direct amount, all right? We thought the same rule applied to the county money as well until last Wednesday when we realized we were told that the county itself is considered an entity for receiving that money and there's a $10 million limit on the entire county. So that means there are there are 20, 28 cities and towns in, in Norfolk County, three of which are not eligible for the limitation anyways, they don't qualify. So that means 25 communities in, in Norfolk County are gonna be competing for that same $10 million limit, which is problematic for us. And so uh, during the past week, I've been working with a congressional delegation uh, along with uh, some of my colleagues in, Nor in Norwood, as well as in Medfield. And we wrote a letter to the congressional delegation asking for relief on that point. And uh, it is a very unique point because there were only six counties in Massachusetts, um, and maybe even the country for that matter, that have this limitation because there were only six active counties in Massachusetts. The rest of them have actually been uh, disbanded, uh, were disbanded several years ago. So that money, they're getting the full extent of that money anyway, they can use it any way they want using that, 20, that $10 million limitation. But in, in uh, Foxborough's case, which is part of Norfolk County, we're limited by the entire county's uh, $10 million limit. So we're trying to get relief on that with, with hoping that uh, the U.S. Treasury will actually give us relief on, a, a, uh, uh, on an interpretation of that that will allow us to do that. But... We do have other options that we're going to explore if we have to, if we don't get the relief in that direction, but including some some capital issues that Chris might Chris and, and Lance have been trying to, to work on, which will allow us to be qualified for the use of that money on the other categories of the of the federal aid. So we're we're exploring different ways, but we've got plenty of time to spend this money. This money doesn't have to be spent until 2024. So we've got some time to, to work on that. And it does require timing action as well. As well. So we, we have some, some, some flexibility on those points. So just so I understand, Bill, so the number that was getting funneled through the county was fairly large. I want to say $3.5 million. So 3.5, it was yeah, rounding. 3.5. Okay. And so are we getting that regardless? The question is what the limitations are or? Well, we, we will be able to, we, we may be able to qualify on the other categories of spending for that money. Yep. Uh, so there, there are multiple categories, and, I, and I'll, I'll get into more of a detailed explanation okay. of that. Uh, Marie and I have been working on that, trying to get the, a, a full explanation of how that's going to work. But you know, getting information out of the federal government is 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 slow. It's it's slow at best, and put it that way. Even though I think uh, our particular congressional uh, de representative here, in this case, uh, Jake Auchincloss, has done a terrific job. His staff have been terrific. To work with and they've done a very good job of representing our interests in washington on this but but clearly this is one where uh there's still more to come in terms of how we can do that now we still we do have the ability to use the money that came to us directly which is just under two million dollars uh over, over two years so we'll get about a little less than a million dollars each year to use and our intent is to try and use um, that money towards our capital needs uh, as one-time money because it's not going to be recurring um and then we'll we'll continue to see if we can do more with the with the remaining three and a half million. But we were hoping at one point that we could actually help uh, supplement the the OPEB uh, contribution um, and and get back to Jack's point about the the fifty percent issue. Um, but we can well, they're not going to let us do that. Unfortunately, uh, they said that it's not a not a qualifying uh, expenditure, so we can't use it that in that direction. It's not a whole surprise, right? Since they disqualified pensions close enough, right? Right. Yeah. And it, what they, the way they ruling was, was that they, in Canada, they want it to be spent on something that's occurring now and not a future liability. So that was the, uh, that was the, the reasoning behind that. Okay. So it's complex at best, but um, what, what we're on it. And, and, and it's interesting to note that the congressional delegation said that, you know, the North, the Norfolk County group has been far ahead of the, the curve in this issue. Uh, on the nationwide level. So it's good to know that we're, we're, we're in the right place trying to push for our interests. Chris, I didn't see the, um, the complete street grant mentioned on East Street. And if, if that's gonna allow you to free up some money for something else, or if you gotta still commit town money to finish that intersection rebuild. So on that, um, 
we we are going to commit some money for the design to finish the design on that um the design um contract we have from tec is uh, i think roughly twenty five thousand dollars to design on it the grant itself which is three hundred forty that forty nine thousand dollars will cover the construction portion of that um so that was something that we had um, factored into chapter 90 um, for the design. And then until we had a true cost on the construction, we hadn't earmarked any funding for that. Um, so we are, we are currently working on a, a three year plan for um, paving. Um, and we actually uh, just spoke with uh, Beta Group, who's our, our pavement management firm. Um, on doing a sidewalk management um, plan as well. Um, so we have that that in the works. We'll, we'll spend some money, um, again, minimal, minimal amount of funds out of chapter 90 to put that sidewalk management plan together um, and start to look at what, what we actually do. Um, we have been doing um, this last year, we started our um, ADA compliance plan. So we have a plan in place to um, take care of all of the sidewalks, intersections in town, anywhere there's a vertical curbing um, at an intersection is supposed to have an ADA compliant ramp. Um, so we rebuilt 25 of those this, this past summer with our own forces um, all along Summer Street. So we're going to continue to do that um, with our own forces. And, you know, if we were spending, if, if we had to pay a contractor to do that work, um, we probably would have been you know, north of a hundred thousand dollars to do those twenty-five intersections. Um, so we did it. Chris, can I ask you a on that? So. What's our what's our liability on that? I mean, I I know that we don't have every crosswalk intersection having the the rumble strips. Um, what's what's our liability on the ADA there? So as as long as we have a it's a, an ADA transition plan, as long as we have that plan in place. And we're working on it we're covered we're good um it's the towns that have not gone through that process so we have an inventory of all of our intersections all of our our, our sidewalks um it's the towns that haven't done that inventory that haven't put a plan together and even the towns that have if they're not actually working on it um that's when you you can become liable for for that and um you know, ADA and, and the the ADA lawyers, you know, come out um, and they come after the towns that aren't doing that work. Understood. Thank you. Yes, the uh, the complete street plan budgeted two hundred twenty thousand to do the East Street intersection, but you got three hundred fifty thousand. So did did the cost go up? Did the state get extra generous with with their money, or what? How did we get like one hundred fifty more than than what we asked for? So. The, that that plan was set um in i think 2018 when we did that um so it's it, it's been a few years so when we submitted our project request um for that grant um this fall we updated that pricing um it also covers some um construction engineering oversight um during the construction process as well so there's some engineering funds funds built into that 349 Great, thank you. All right, I don't see any other hands raised. So thank you guys for presenting, Chris and your team. Bill, thanks for being here. You're welcome to hang around for approval of the minutes, but you're also welcome to <clears throat> drop off. So thanks so much. Great job. Thanks everyone, have a good night. Good night. Bill, Bill, you're muted if you're trying to talk to us. Thank you. Hey, Bill, you're still muted. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was muted there. I didn't, I'm talking myself here. <laughs> so I, I just, I, I didn't mean to be argumentative with Jack or with Dan on, the, on that, on that issue earlier. Um, we'll try and, we'll try and cover it for you comprehensively on, on the, on the 16th for you. So you can understand where we're coming from in that. Okay. Yeah, and apologies right. for cutting those two guys off. I hadn't gotten back to them with the agenda. So I just wanted to <laughs> put a pause on it there and then we'll talk about it in a couple of weeks. No worries. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. 
Hey, everyone, I just, I know it didn't say much, but just want to offer if you <laughs> want any more specific details on any projects or any uh, thing like that, feel free to reach out. Uh, my email's on the website. Um, happy to, happy to discuss any specifics you want to get into. Thanks for attending. You already yeah. had an important role. You were the backup budget guy for the really detailed question. So thanks for being here. We just didn't pick the right ones. Oh, nope, that's all good. Happy to help. <laughs> he, he did answer all of our questions in the liaison meeting. Nice. So, just so you know, he, he can talk. <laughs> Okay, thanks guys. So rest of the ad comm. So I sent the minutes out, um, I think last week. Everybody get a chance to look at them or, or did anybody have any concerns? Okay. No comments. I've been told that I have to do a roll call vote. So I'm going to just oh. ask you, yes, that's a, apparently because of the way we're doing the, um, the, the, the TV meeting. So I'm gonna, ask you each in the order I see you, which is probably different from the order you see each other. So it may come as a surprise. So um, I just need a, a yes, no, or abstain. So Raffaella? Yes. Okay, Dennis? Yes. I think Raffaella, you weren't at the last meeting, were you? I think technically- I wasn't, you, but I, I wasn't. Could I still, have to hold on, I read it. I mean, is it okay? Well, but the, the question is, so my, my the question is, um, so let me take a step back. I should have asked for a motion to approve the minutes reflecting the meeting and then a second. So okay. do I hear a motion? Motion to approve the minutes from this meeting. I'm gonna call out Dan, a second? Second. second this is so much easier in person. Thank you, Dennis. Um, so let's do this again. Raphael, I think the question is, um, do they reflect the meeting? So I think since you weren't there, I'm gonna ask you to yes, abstain. Okay. okay. Dennis? Yes. Jack? Yes. Marlo? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Dan? Yes. <laughs> made me hold, you made me wait on that one. Uh, Jay? Yes. And Selena? Yes. All right, nice. Um, any other items we want to cover? Just one quickie. Yeah. Um, you um, assigned us to different departments within uh, the town. And a few weeks later, the um, uh, the news of a reorganization came out. So, for example, um, when uh, uh, Mark Craig comes before the board, he will be speaking for the veterans agent, who we would normally have spoken to. Yes. He, and 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 um, and also the recreation director. Who we would normally be speaking directly to, and that would be, that also applies to other areas. So uh, apologies, to, uh, I didn't. I missed the reorganization. So what happened? Um, well, uh, uh, the, our planning director is is now uh, the land use director. Okay. And she ha and she has several um, departments under her. Mark Craig is the human services director and he has several departments under him so did he keep did he keep senior center and then yes. absorb more yes. okay okay yes. can you and, can you and, send that out and i apologize i missed that somehow uh, sure i i, I I'll, I'll have to dig it somewhere around uh is uh, it in the patch or somewhere like that or i, I don't remember I'll, okay. I'll, I'll find it i'll find it and send it to you Okay, but uh, but where where we would normally be talking to the uh, uh, to the direct person in that department, yep. Uh, at the given the reorganization, we will now be talking to somebody who represents them. And so when you we say we are talking, bit, are you talking the liaison meeting or the presentation, like this one we just did? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the liaison person may choose to go to, for example, the veterans agent yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. To, to use as an example. Yep, yep. But when but when we come to review the veterans agent uh, budget, and, and I use that because that's an easy one. Yeah, uh, yeah, as yeah, an yeah. example, yep. uh, 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 the veterans agent won't be there, I assume, uh, be, because Mark Craig represents now several uh departments got it okay and and um and and the uh uh the the planning director which also represents I, I don't i don't know if she's back from uh she told uh, me march 
She told me March she was coming well, she, back. I, th I think she was out five or six weeks out uh, in February or something. I don't remember okay. the date. I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. might have it written down. Uh, but uh, so we are a little bit more removed from mm -hmm. the weeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, than we were in the past. Okay. That's. I would like to uh, echo Jack's sentiment on uh, on that and a few other things. Um, just a few, not necessarily concerns, but items that I'll be looking into uh, before we get to a point where we're going to debate these budgets. Um, one is that I talked to Chris about uh, the LED lights uh, for the town for streetlights, and there was a discussion about maintenance use, electrical use, and the actual cost of the lights. And I asked that to be broken out. And the, the answer basically was, no, no, we're not doing that. And I just, my advice is that as we get to a point where we've replaced all of the streetlights in town, the cost structure changes from purchase to maintenance and cost. So as we go forward, that cost is going to rapidly change and we're not breaking that out. So that's one thing that I'm going to go back to and revisit. Another is that the public works is at 2.45%. Now, if you look at all of Chris's, you know, I think he has four, you know, cost centers, essentially. Um, we, he has an audit that's done on snow and ice. And their recommendation is going to be over the next couple of years to bump that number up. So as much as we're looking at it as not a cost year over year, that's an increase, Chris's request number is probably more indicative of what the auditors are going to tell us to move our number to over the next couple of years, which is a cost increase of between 80 and $100,000 for the budget. And that's a minimum remembering that we can always raise it and we can't lower it. So those are two costs right now that I'm not exactly comfortable with and that the third point I have is that this year we are moving all gas and diesel costs to a central location. So they used to be broken out across all of the budgets. And I think we're going to need to be very vigilant in checking to make sure that all those costs are transferred appropriately because some of them have gone up and down over years. Some of them have been in snow and ice. And they've never been in one spot. And I think that reallocation needs to be tracked pretty closely because that's a lot of money. That's between police vehicles, fire vehicles, DPW, school buses. That's across the board. And we so, just need to make sure. So, similar to other slaps, collapsed, collapsed categories, won't we get the four-year history? Or I guess five plus the... Of all of them collapsed we together? Will see, we will see the actuals, yep. and then we will see what's requested. Yep. But we won't see the actuals brought up to the requested line where all the gas and diesel is going to go. So we can request that. Um, you, you asked for stuff broken out. But that um, if you need an exhibit like that, I, I would go to George. I would call him, by the way. And ask him or, Mar uh, or Marie. Yeah, Chris said them. that George and Marie declined to provide. It. Okay, we'll talk to him directly. You and I can yes. follow up on that. Um, the final thing is that um, the reason I asked Bill about the federal money coming in that we hadn't necessarily seen yet is that in the financial summit we had in the fall, that was planned to go to the CIP. So that is counting against the roads and sidewalks that Jack's talking about, that is talking about new DPW, police, fire vehicles, a lot of the things we count on for, for CIP budget, that money we're counting on. And as Bill just said, we haven't necessarily seen it yet. So not to say it's not coming, not to say that Bill is not following up with our representatives. I don't think that's true. I, I think 100% he's speaking to them he's just repeating back what he's hearing from them but we are getting to a point where we're counting our chickens before they hatch and that's a dangerous position to be in 
and not that come March, that money won't come through. We'll have everything we need. But the reason I asked the question and he answered it honestly, we haven't seen it yet. And that makes me a little nervous. So just kind of, I wanted to get that out in front of everybody, you know, not to send it, you know, in a message or a text or an email individually, but in front of everybody is that these are things we're going to have to sort through in, in the next couple of months. So sorry for the rant, but I wanted to get it out there before the end of the meeting while it's still on record. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. All right. Do I have uh, any other, well, any other things you want to talk about? So uh, sorry. I meant to say, um, those of you in particular who haven't been through this cycle before, you're going to come away with some pretty strong ideas or understandings of this. I just recommend jotting down some notes after the meeting. Spend five minutes jotting down what your impressions were right now, because we're going to meet in, I guess, about six weeks over either one or two meetings. And you, my, my own experience is I forget half the stuff. So I immediately will sit down after the meeting and take notes. So just some advice for the new members. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all I got. So do I have a motion? Selena, were you going to say something? No? Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Seconded. Do Thank I have you. to, do I really have to do a roll call on this one? I'm not going to do a roll call. Raise your hands and we'll see if I get in trouble. All in favor, raise your hands. All right. That's everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thanks Thank for your good work. Thank you, everyone.